Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, that we are your sons and your daughters through faith by receiving the born again experience. Thank you in this day for your word that is alive within us. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that leads and guides us in all truth. Thank you that I can declare that I rely upon you to bring your word in accuracy unto your people. For faith to be established and every heart's minds to be changed 
And Father, thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit teaches unto us by your grace in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. What a privilege it is to have the ability to speak unto people through the medium that we have, through the media that is at our disposal, through technology and through connecting unto you. I want to welcome you. Thank you for making time in your schedule to spend your time with me. I want to ask you there, wherever you are, send this link to one person, just to one person there, wherever you are, and you can make a difference and evangelize, preach the gospel through the media that God has given unto our disposal. Those of you watching us for the first time, welcome with us. Excited to have you. Tell us where you are watching from and remember to comment in the comment fields below. As more people are coming on, the title of our message or the title of my message is The Power of Our Words. The Power of Our Words. When we think of power, we think of electricity. When we think of power, we think of muscle power. When we think of power, we think of horsepower, of animals and of motors. But I want to say to you that there is power in your words. Now understand the word of God says unto us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ultimately, hearing the word of God are words that has been given unto us by revelation, impartation through the word, by the rhema and by the logos word. So we have faith established in our hearts through words that comes unto us. Now we can see first and foremost that there is an impact in our lives that has been made because of the power that there is in the spiritual aspect in our lives pertaining to words. But there is power as well when we are talking about the natural aspect. So I want to read for you first a portion from the Word of God. I'm going to start with one scripture. We start with Proverbs 23 verses 7, a very well-known portion of scripture. It says, For as a man thinketh in his heart so easy, in behavior and in manipulation, he says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you, but it is begrading the cost. Another translation says, as a man think of in his heart so easy. So ultimately, whatever enters your heart will be reflected upon your mouth. It is very important to understand the word of God says unto us that whatever you say will be an accurate reflection of who you are and of what your heart is reflecting. So if you are the kind of person that blesses people and uplifts them, you bring encouragement unto them and your heart is being revealed as a heart of compassion. If you are a person that shares the gospel of the good news with people, it reveals that your heart is gracious and is grateful about your own salvation that you have received. So we can clearly see that as a people, we can bring peace into a conversation or we can bring disruption. We need to decide in our hearts what are we allowing to flow over our lips. Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 it says, I call heaven and earth as a witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, a blessing and a curse. Therefore, you shall choose life in order that you may live, you and your discernment. You're going to read verse 20. It says, by obeying the Lord God, by loving him, you will obey his every commandments. Three key aspects, loving the Lord God, obeying His commandments, and keep His words close unto us. We can come into a conversation and change the atmosphere by just reflecting our true heart attitude of joy and of comfort. I want to say to you and make a statement. There is power in understanding your heart's attitude, being positive, being seated in the word of God and that power will reflect in having your prayers answered. If we study the word of God pertaining to the prayer life of Jesus, there's a key that Jesus is giving unto us regarding our heart attitude and the confession of our mouths. Turn with me as a foundation to Proverbs 18 verses 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it 
and indulge in it will eat its fruits and bear the consequences of its words. Now looking at the prayer life of Jesus and understanding what Jesus is saying unto us by having our prayers answered, there are key things that we need to look at. And this we find in Ephesians 4 verses 29. It says, do not let unwholesome, foul, profound, worthiless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth. But only such speech as is good for building up others according to the needs and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. We need to understand that our words has got a natural implication, but our words has also got a spiritual implication. Implication By living a life that is holy and consecrated unto the Lord, we will see that our prayer lives will be answered. What does it mean to live a life that is holy? It reflects your conduct. In other words, the word that I speak and the life that I live, ultimately, that we find it is seated in our hearts. What then was the key in Jesus' life in having his prayers answered? We see that in Hebrews 5 verses 7. In the days of his earthly life, Jesus offered up both specific petitions and urgent supplication. The answer is coming. For that which he needed with fervent and tears to the one who was always able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission to God. His sinless and unfailing determination to do the Father's will. God reflects upon our hearts through his spirit when we are speaking words that is contrary to the word of God. And is contrary to what God desires for us to speak into a situation. We clearly see from this portion of scripture, the fact that Jesus was submitting unto his father was a key aspect for having his prayers answered. Maybe you are there wherever you are and you are in a place that your prayers are not being answered. Is this not something that you need to have a look at? To understand that there is power in your words that you are saying. In other words, for us to have an effective prayer life, we need to be careful regarding the words that we are speaking. Can you imagine, and I'm not going to ask of you to type for me your age on the screen. Can you think for yourself the amount of years that you have been on this earth and being able to speak? How many words have you not spoken? If we would ask of you to establish a library with various books, that would reflect the words that you have spoken on your life. How many books will that be? How many pages will there be in those books and chapters? And above everything else, what will you call those books? It is being said that a woman speaks twice the amount of words than a man in a day. I'm not going to get involved in that. If you're going to study the word of God and you go and search for the following words, tongue, lips, mouth. You will see that these aspects are being referred to 170 times in the word of God. It is clearly something that is very important. James is saying unto us a key recipe of the power of our words in James 3 verses 4 to 5. The Amplified says, and look at the ship, even though they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are still directed by a very small rudder whether the impulse of the helmsman determines in the same sense the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things scripture is saying unto us all well, even these powerful boats are being driven and are being turned in a direction that the captain, the sailor wants by merely the small rudder that is connected to the boat. We can have a large forest, a large field, and a small fire can destroy that field. Speaking negative words 
and words that are not uplifting and words that are contrary with the word of God can have profound impacts for us, especially in the spiritual realm. We therefore need to understand that by speaking negative words, we can bring a situation over our lives. And by speaking a positive word, it can result in a blessing. When the people of Israel were about to move into Jericho, the clear instruction that came unto them, for seven days you will march around the city, not saying a word, and the seventh day you will scream and shout. It was done unto them because 40 years ago, the people were murmuring and complaining when the 12 spies went to look at the promised land. And they spoke negative. And the word of God says that God said, let it be unto you as in my hearing. And God said unto them, you will not speak when you invade the city. For seven days you will be quiet. And as we've seen the seventh day when they shouted and screamed, the walls came down. We can see both aspects from this. When we are quiet, there's a blessing and things are happening. But when we are speaking the words we need to, walls will come down. And I don't want to say to you, when we walk by faith, we can see powerful things happen. When we, imbibe, when we abide in Christ, we will see that the blessing of the Lord God will follow us. When we enter the place of fear, we can make a difference by speaking words of faith. I want to say to you that there are all kinds of words in this life that we need to God. Therefore, by having a heart's attitude and by speaking the words that is in alignment with the will of God and the word of God established in our hearts through faith, we can bring gentleness, peace, kindness and love into the lives of others. Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 says the following. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. These are the things that need to be established through the Spirit from within and be seated upon our lips. There are seven characteristics of a righteous person that is speaking the accurate words that is in accordance with a righteous person. And we see that in Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. And I'm only going to read for you the scriptures where I'm pulling the words from. It says unto us in Proverbs 10. These things, when we think about them, it will bring a change in the lives of other people. The word of God says unto us in Proverbs 10 verses 11. That there is a fountain of life in our words. I read the scripture. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life. But the violence overwhelmed the mouth of the wicked. Verse 13 is saying unto us that a righteous person has discerning lips. I read the scripture. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning. But a rot is for the back of him who lacks judgment. Verse 19 is saying that a righteous holds his tongue. The scripture, when words are many, sin is not absent. But he holds his tongue, he is wise. Word of God says in verse 20 that the righteous has choice silver. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. Verse 21. The righteous nourishes many. The lips of the righteous nourishes many. But the fool die for the lack of judgment. Verse, 20, verse 31. The righteous lips brings forth wisdom. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom. But the perverse tongue will be cut out. Verse 32. The righteous knows what is fitting. The lips of the righteous knows what is fitting, but the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. And then I want to say to you that we need to come to a place in our lives as a righteous people. What does it mean to be righteous? To be born again. To be in right standing with God. A well-known evangelist or a mission has gone out unto India and he took a book with him to read at the time while he had spare time. The name of the book is A Chance to die. I say again, a chance to die. And it's all about a woman by the name of Amy Carmel. 
Now this woman was a missionary in India years before this missionary arrived in India. And what she did is that she would free children from prostitution. And as the man that took the book with him to India was in India, he realized what this woman needed to have gone through in order to save these children from prostitution. And on every road that he traveled, everything that he needed to endure, every hardship, was unto him an indication that we need to have our hearts circumcised in order to come into the place where God desires for us to be. And he realized in every situation, he's to guard his mouth for what he has gone through. If he wants to succeed in that what God has called him for. And I want to say to you, we need to come to the place where we make the same decision as this missionary. And he made unto himself a decision to say that every chance that he has, every endurance of hardship, he says the following, this is a chance to die to myself. We need to understand the power of our confession. When we came unto Christ, according to Romans 10, it says unto us, we believe with our hearts and confess with our mouth. It is a principle in our walk with God. That is how we is established being righteous, being born again. The heart and confess with the mouth. And I want to say to you this principle, we need to apply it continuously throughout our life. Never allow your circumstances to dictate the words that you are speaking. Always let it be by the leading of the spirit and the renewal of the mind. Let it be that people desire to be in your presence because you are positive and uplifting rather than them to shun away from you because you are always negative and complaining. A very well-known author wrote the following. His name is Richard Blackery. He said the following. Jesus spoke plainly about idle words, yet warning often goes unheeded. Jesus said that for every idle word, there will be a time of counting in the day of judgment. We would expect Jesus to condemn profound and vile use of the tongue. But idle words, idle words are the things we say careless, without concern for their impact on others. We too quickly assume that the sin of our tongue is a minor sin. Sins that God will overlook. Yet Jesus was fully aware of the devastating nature of our words. I want to leave this thought with you. And I want to ask you there wherever you are. I want to pray with you. Even for myself I want to say that we need to come at the place where we allow the Spirit of God to speak through us. In every situation words of faith and inspiration not condemnation. I want to say to you, regardless of what you are going through, Christ is faithful. God is faithful. Through His Spirit, He's leading us. As a born-again believer, the Word of God says, all things work for the good for those who love Him. There, wherever you are, if you are saying unto me, I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to pray with you. Then we're going to pray a corporate prayer. There, wherever you are, if you are saying, I do not know the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, your word says, if I believe with my heart, confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, I will be born again. In this day, Father, as I have faith in my heart and confess with my mouth, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you that you wash me, that you cleanse me, in the blood of the Lamb. Thank you that I am on my way to heaven. Thank you that I am forgiven. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. I want to congratulate you with that quality decision. You're welcome to comment in the comment field below. Or alternatively contact us at info at Christian Family Church Centurion. We would love to follow up with you. I want to do a corporate prayer in this day. But I want to include myself in that as well. There wherever you are. Don't you want to bow your heads and pray with me. As we pray unto the Lord God for wisdom and understanding regarding this word, the understanding that there is power in our words. Father, in this day we come before you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the revelation that we have received by the impartation of your word. With the understanding, Father, as a man thinketh when his heart so easy. But, Father, that our words can speak things into existence. 
but as much, Father, our words can bring condemnation. Your word says unto us, Father, one of the key aspects of Jesus' prayers being answered was the fact that he obeyed you in everything. In this day, Father, we desire to obey you even by the words that we are speaking. Thank you, Father, for your wisdom and understanding in this and that your spirit preaches the sermon, this word unto us. Father, not just today, but in the days, the months, and the years to come. Thank you, Father, that we can come before you and ask for your forgiveness, Lord, where we have spoken idle words as you reveal those things unto us. As we need to rectify that, Father, with people, thank you, Lord, that we do that with compassion, love, and understanding. And, Father, thank you for your grace and your forgiveness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. What a powerful word. That is what a powerful aspect to understand that there is power in our words. We can say to somebody, we love you, you are beautiful, and you are kind. But I want to say to you in this time, thank you for being with me. Thank you for finding time in your busy schedule. It's been a great opportunity for me to spend time with you. Once again, share this link with one person and make an everlasting change in their lives. Stay safe. Join us every morning, 8 o'clock for our daily prayer. Have a look at Facebook for our daily devotions. Stay safe. Thank you for being with me. Don't run away. As the Lord is pressing upon your heart, our banking details are due to run across the screen. Let us sow into the kingdom. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Allow me to pray with you over that giving. Father, thank you for every financial seed that is placed in the ground. Thank you, Lord, for a harvest to come, Father. Press down, shaken together, and overflow. And Father, thank you, Lord God, by faith we receive in this day as we give our seed a name in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that you give unto those who do not have the ability to give. And Father, thank you, Lord, that we obey you in this time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. As the banking details runs across the screen, stay safe. Thank you for being with me. Looking forward to seeing you soon.